What's up everybody, my name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, I'm going to be narrating a tour through the cardiac anesthesiologist setup for open heart surgery on cardiopulmonary bypass. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. As I go through this tour, I'll be highlighting all of the features of this operating room setup that make this type of anesthesia very unique. Without further ado, let's dive in. We'll start off by talking about the IV pole immediately to the right of the patient, which as you can see has two Alaris pumps on it so that we can infuse a lot of different medications throughout the course of the case. The medications hanging right now are the ones that we know we're going to start with. And those include a crystalloid called Isolite, which really just serves as a runner to get the rest of the medications into the patient an antifibrinolytic agent called tranexamic acid, which is used to reduce bleeding, and a vasopressor called norepinephrine. On the second set of pumps, we have an antibiotic called vancomycin. The rest of these channels are empty, but we can add other medications as needed throughout the course of the case. All of this tubing connects to one large set of stopcocks, which will ultimately be connected to a central line. Peeking out just behind the set of infusion pumps is an autotransfusion system called a Sorin Extra, which is actually managed by the perfusionist in this case, who sits right back here with the rest of this equipment, which also is managed by the perfusionist. And this includes a hemostasis management system and of course a cardiopulmonary bypass circuit through which the patient's blood flow will be diverted so that it can be oxygenated and ventilated during the course of the case. Just above the anesthesia machine, we have a cerebral oximetry device, which allows us to monitor the oxygen saturation of the brain. And immediately next to that is a bispectral index monitor, which is used to assess the level of anesthetic depth. Below these devices, we have a computer, which has our electronic health record, which is standard for any operating room. Next to that is the main screen for controlling our ventilator. This touchscreen monitor has controls for the mode, tidal volume, respiratory rate, and so forth. And on our monitor, you can see that there are many different data points that can be displayed, including heart rate, arterial blood pressure, left atrial pressure, pulmonary artery pressure, and many others. Just underneath these screens, we have several important pieces of equipment, including a bispectral index monitor sticker, an endotracheal tube, a direct laryngoscopy blade, an oral airway, and we have a magnet ready to go. Magnets are used by anesthesiologists when we need to manage pacemakers or implantable cardio defibrillators. Here's the rest of the ventilator circuit, which will eventually be connected to an endotracheal tube once that gets placed. And importantly, we have a Yankauer suction device, which is always extremely important for safe management of a patient's airway. Next to our ventilator is the anesthesia cart, which contains a lot of equipment and medications. Here are the medications that have been drawn up and ready to go for this specific case. They include midazolam, fentanyl, propofol, rocuronium, heparin, epinephrine, norepinephrine, esmolol, nitroglycerin, and calcium chloride. Any other medications that need to be drawn up during this case can easily be found in one of the cart's drawers. Next to the medications are electrodes, which will be placed on the patient's chest and back and eventually connected to a defibrillator. One piece of equipment that's ubiquitously found in cardiac anesthesia operating rooms is this pacemaker. This pacemaker will ultimately be hooked up to leads that are implanted by the surgeon. The whole reason why we use cardiopulmonary bypass is so that we can actually stop the heart from beating so the surgeon can operate on it. But then once the surgeon's done, we need to get the heart beating again. And sometimes it needs a little bit of help, which is why we have this pacemaker. I'll quickly point out this device that we lovingly call a monster, which is just a frame that goes above the patient's head to protect it during surgery from anything that's on the surgical field. This device is a transesophageal echo machine, which is used by cardiac anesthesiologists to assess cardiac function throughout the course of these surgeries. This is what the probe looks like, and I'll also point out that part of doing cardiac anesthesia fellowship, which is a year of subspecialty training after finishing anesthesia residency, includes becoming certified in transesophageal echocardiography. To the left of the operating table is a second IV pole, which includes a special type of bag that we connect our arterial lines to. These transducers allow us to measure blood pressure inside of arterial or venous systems. Below the transducers is this warmer called a ranger, 
which can be used to heat up any type of fluid that's being transfused into the patient. Just behind this warmer is all of the equipment needed to set up an arterial line, which includes a sterilizing chlorhexidine swab, an arm board to improve anatomy for placing an arterial line, a set of sterile gloves, a 20 gauge angiocatheter used for the arterial line, a syringe to inject local anesthetic to make this a less uncomfortable procedure, and sterile tegaderm underneath to secure the arterial line once it's not shown in this video is a similar looking setup which is used to place a central line, also used very commonly during these cases. Several feet away are these defibrillators which can be used to deliver electrical shocks to a patient's heart. These defibrillators are important ways for us to manage a patient's electrical activity in their heart, so we have them ready to go for these surgeries. One special feature on our operating table is this warming blanket, which sits underneath a patient and can help keep them warm. However, there are often periods of cooling a patient during cardiopulmonary bypass. These stickers have special pads on them that help protect pressure points during surgery. And this is a warming device called a bear hugger that delivers warm air to that special blanket that I just mentioned. Well, that wraps up this tour of the cardiac anesthesiologist's operating room setup. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.